Okay, so enough for the preliminaries. The first thing, really, you look at uh, other e-commerce or you look at other tutorials about how to set up e-commerce website, and they start right off by installing the plugin, creating a product, putting a link on a page. Unfortunately, while that makes the tutorial nice and fast to teach, and it's a relatively understandable process, it's not really a good way to start building an e-commerce website. The best way to start building an e-commerce website is first to sit down and map out its organization. Because good site organization really matters. It matters because, well, for a couple reasons. One, because it makes it easier for your customers to find your site. And this may not seem obvious to you, but it will be as we work our way through this. Good site organization means or makes available to you good SEO and good semantic URLs. And it's that good SEO and good semantic URLs that will make your site more easily found by your customers. Secondly, it also makes it easier for your customers to find the right product when they're on your site. And so we are striving in this case then for a couple of principles. The first one is simplicity. We are looking to create a very simple organizational system for our products that people can intuit and that people can get to quickly and easily. Which means that just because it's possible to organize something by something else doesn't mean we ought to. And so, for example, you could organize your products by price, but given the circumstances, we're not going to have product organization by price. You're not going to be able to look at a list of the products from highest to lowest, because that's not a useful method of looking at or organizing a set of products. We're looking for simplicity. And that simplicity ends up then limiting the choices. And limiting the choices is actually very good. The reason why you want to limit the choices is because you do a better job of selling your products. Last month, Smashing Magazine had an excellent article on the paradox of choice and drew the conclusion that the more choices people have, the less likely they are to make a purchase. And so we are working on simplicity in order to make this an effective site. And then secondly uh, is progressive revelation. And what that means is that even in a complex site, it doesn't seem complex. You know, what we do is we let somebody make one decision and then that decision then leads them to another set of choices and then they make the next decision and then that decision may even lead them to another set of choices. And so we don't expose the entire chain of the site organization in, in one place, but what we do is we progressively reveal it, we progressively open the site up as people enter it. So there are, well we're going to talk about four different kinds of e-commerce sites tonight, because each of them gets organized a little bit differently. You know, the first kind is just a small store. So you've got one to ten products you know, in that case, your, the organization of your store is unlikely to control the organization of your site. So we're going to take a look at an example of this. Actually, we're, we're going to be looking at examples of BYOB website members' e-commerce sites that they've built, although not using Shop. They, will, they built it using WPE Store, but nevertheless, the first one we're going to look at is Lady Luck Diary. Okay, so he has essentially one product. He has them listed here as three products, but it's really one one product. It's a, a diary, and you can buy it in a three-pack, a seven-pack, or a 12-pack. Well, this does not need to have any effect whatsoever on organization of his site. In fact, you can see he's got it here on his home page. So you can go to a products page, but the products page just does exactly the same thing. It shows you these three products. And all the rest of his site organization is for information, information that will help you make decisions about how you record your gambling proceeds. But the store itself doesn't have any real effect on the organization of the site. 
The next kind of site is a medium sized site that has a simple site organization and that's really sort of 10 to 100 products. It has a simple set of product categories that you can find in one list and the example that we're going to take a look at is personalbabyproducts.com. personalbabyproducts.com okay so in his case he has two lists of products you know you hover over products one and here are his one set of product categories and you come over here and here is another set of product categories you click on one of those product categories and you get to all the products that are inside that category so it's very simple. There's there you don't drill down is not complicated. You can just simply go down and click on rompers and presto change oh there you are at rompers. And so the the organization of this site is is very simple and straightforward. Now, so in his, this case, customers can browse the products by category. And also the main catalog page should probably be a product category page which is not something actually that he has. You know, if you his he doesn't actually have a main catalog page that has all of his products. He ends up actually having two catalog pages. Products 1 having you know his type of products in under his products 1 group and then products 2 as a type of products under his products 2 group, but he doesn't actually have a main catalog page, but I'm going to suggest to you that you really want a main catalog page that shows each of your product categories. And then the store really needs to have a nice, fast, simple drill down. That is a way for you to be able to get to what you're interested in quickly and easily. And so that's what this site has. Right? Because it has simple product categories, it has a simple system of drill down. So the next level of complexity is the medium sized complex store. And, and in this case, you're going to have 50 to 150 products, something like that. And now what you have is hierarchical product categories. That is categories and subcategories. And it could even be the case that a product may fit into more than one category or more than one subcategory. And an example of a site like this is JackieJacobson.com. There we go. Now Jackie's site, Jackie's site has five big categories of products. She's got tile art, tile and art glass, canvas art, art prints, note cards, and original artwork. And so she's got these five big categories. And then if you select on one of her the next category or on one of those big categories then you see the subcategories under it so under tile and glass art she's got art coasters and cutting boards and glass cutting boards and coaster sets and fruit coasters and and then art murals and that sort of thing and so and so she's got all these subcategories and then under the subcategory once you click on one of those subcategories you get all the products that are potentially available inside of that subcategory. Now, in this case, then the home page has like a page that's similar to a department directory, right? Where she's got her five departments or her five main categories, and then clicking from there, you'll go to the next department, or you go to the actual department page or the actual category page itself, which then displays its subcategories. And then each of those subcategories displays its products. And, and this is what I mean by progressive revelation. That is, you don't get to the blueberry glass coaster from the front page. You work your way through by successively stepping through these essentially category menus, although they're pages displaying the products. And as you step through that, you get closer and closer to the product. This has a, a more complicated drill down. There isn't a nice straightforward 
you know, hover over something and click on a product like there is in the other project. In fact, she doesn't even have drop downs because of that. So if you go to art prints, for example, here are her two categories of art prints, and she doesn't have a lot of things cluttering her menu by dropping down off of that. Okay. And so the next one then is a large complex store. And I'm not going to show you a specific example of a large complex store, but you can you understand the concept, right? The product categories are hierarchical and you're going to have lots of product categories and subcategories. So you could think of REI.com or Nordstrom.com or any of these other large stores that sell lots of different products and lots of subcategories within those products. And, you know, you're not going to get to men's hiking boots in at REI until you get to, you know, men's apparel and then footwear and then hiking boots. And that's the that's the same kind of an organization that would happen with in this case, if that was the kind of store you had.